Welcome, 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 ladies and gentlemen. We are once again live down here in the Bear Cave Studios for another episode of The Frenzy. With me, your host, Freddy Aloso, with my co-host, Joey the Eagle. What's going on, Joe? It's been too long, my friend. Too long, bro. I apologize. You know how it is. We're, back we're back sorry to keep you guys waiting. But we are yeah, back, yeah. live and in living color, coming to your screens, wherever you consume our podcast. We are right here. It's been it's a minute, bro. Because it's kind of like how those bills consume that ass from the Eagles. Just yep. saying. And I, I took I took a big L last week. I dropped, I, I dropped four games and a jersey to Joe. Don't uh, worry, I lost. Listen. I lost the bet once again. That Miami Vice pink jersey gonna look nice, man. And I'm I ordered it. Out my next play. Al- already ordered it. It's on its way from Hong Kong, China. So one of the two. One of one of the two. We'll figure it out where where it's exactly it's coming from. But um, it's crazy, man. We got NFL news. We got NFL. We got UFC two forty four. Live from Madison Square Garden going on right now as we speak. I've got it on on the screen over here. I know, Joe, you've got it on over there as well. Crazy fights. We got the BMF title. That looks official. Um, Diaz versus Masvidal. You got the Black Beast fighting on there as well. You got Till and Gastelum. Who do you got in the main event, Joe? Listen, first and foremost, you know, they bring it to Madison Square Garden. They got to come correct. So you knew the, you knew the card was going to be crazy. Right. Um, I am originally from Fort Lauderdale, Florida. So you already know who I got to go with, right? <laughs> I think I got an idea. I got to go with the Cuban Jesus, baby. I gotta, you, you know what I'm saying? I've been, I've been watching him for, uh, for a while. So I'm definitely, I'm going to ride with him, man. Especially coming off that Ben Askren knee to the face, I think he's riding that uh that high. And I know no, I know Nate Diaz is serious. I'm not I'm not trying to knock Nate Diaz. He got a couple screws loose. Actually, I think he got a couple screws that just aren't even there. But um, it should be a good fight. But I just think uh, yeah, I just think Masvidal is gonna come out on top. Yeah, I, I've been saying it all day, man. I. I wish both these dudes could win because I love them both. I love their attitudes. I love their fighting styles. I I want to go. I want to go with Masvidal. I really do. But I think Nate Diaz is going to take it. That's fine, man. It wouldn't be the first time you're wrong, bro. Listen, <laughs> I still I still love and support you and treat you like the dear friend that you are. <laughs> And then in the co-main event, we've got Till and Gastelum. Gastelum used some shady techniques to make weight at the last minute on Friday morning, I think it was. I don't know if you got to, to see that. I did send it to you where he's. it looks like he's supporting his arm on his uh, trainer's shoulder. To make yeah, that weight, that... yeah, it, it's it's some shady shit that he got fined for, and because he came in, he's not forfeiting any any of his purse, but he is, you know, just barely made weight. And Till is moving up from Yo, is it the lower is weight it limit to up. I feel like for UFC, they always got some type of. Um... I don't want to call it a discrepancy, but there's always like an issue between the drug testing, between the weigh-ins. I don't know if this is just manufactured for them to get, you know, more clickbait, a lot more publicity. But I always feel like there's always something sketchy about either someone weighing in and then they they do or they do not make the weight or they got some illegal banned substance in there or non-illegal banned substance in their um, in their testings. You got Diaz over there saying he hopes the water isn't contaminated as he's drinking it out of a bottle. I thought that was pretty funny. <laughs> yeah, you could always <laughs> you can always come in for some some good yeah, poster board material from Nate Diaz. 
talking crazy. But um, also tonight, as we're recording 11-2, we have Canelo and, who is it, Kozlochev or Kolo, Kolochev? Listen, you know Kovalev. when it comes to these foreign names, I leave the pronunciations to them to you. So <laughs> whatever you say, brother, I am just going to co-sign. Cause I, I believe I, it's Kovalev. I if have I, if enough I'm issues with my name, let alone other people's names. <laughs> but I will say this. on the Speaking of weigh-ins, when I saw him and Canelo standing face-to-face, my man looks like a monster compared yes. to Canelo. 100%. A monster compared. So I'm interested to see. I mean, I know Canelo's... Uh, a true Mexican fighter in that, you know, they're always known to have good chins and the ability to sit there and throw punches. But you got to be careful because you keep jumping up in weight classes, the punches get a little bit harder. So you might have been able to take, you know, something on the chin in a certain weight class, but you bump up two, three weight classes and uh, those punches start to hurt just a little bit more. You, you might catch one and go night-night. Yeah, exactly. So that that'll definitely be an interesting fight. I mean, right now, I know baseball is over, but we're kind of within that month where everything is just going. You know what I'm saying? You got yeah. basketball, you got baseball, good UFC cards, good boxing fights. So for a sports fan in general, the weekends is jam packed. Yeah, you, you, there's no rest. You got no, no UFC, rest. boxing, like you said, baseball just finished, hockey basketball, NFL, NCAA, like everything is all at once. I don't know if you're DVRing or you're multi-screening it on your guys' end, but it's hard to keep up. Yeah, I mean, I, honestly, I'm not even going to lie, man. I can't keep up. I pick a couple of sports uh, sports games that I definitely need to watch. You know, I'm going to turn into that Eagles-Bears game. I'm obviously going to watch this UFC event. But it's literally not enough time in the day anymore, man, to, to sit down and actually watch everything. The one cool thing, though, that I will give it to DeZone and Canelo, they are not uh, – Canelo is not walking out to the ring until the Diaz-Masvidal fight is over. That was announced okay. yesterday. So for everybody who's waiting to see that and they don't want to switch between both – you're going to get one, and then you can switch over directly and catch the Canelo fight. I mean, you're talking about a win-win right there. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, they're obviously doing it from their end so that they can make sure they maximize viewership. I mean, it makes no sense to have the two cards battle each other from mm-hmm. a viewer, from a consumer, or, you know, from from just them handing out their products. So I'm happy they're doing that because yeah. I will be – turning right over and trying to make it let's face it i mean these fights these fights that kick off excuse me at one o'clock in the morning it's really past my bedtime you know i like to be sleeping by then the good thing is is it's daylight savings we get an hour yeah i swear you just dropped the gems today i didn't even know about that (laughs) we get an extra hour tonight that's today so that's that's today that's a couple hours away bro breaking news for those of you that didn't know yo you know what's crazy that usually happens, not usually happens, but it's happened on my birthday because mine's the sixth. Yeah. So I remember one one year I went out for my birthday and I was out there and I just felt like I was there forever. And then I realized that the time had, you know, went, went back. <laughs> Shifted back. And I, was like, I was like, damn, you know, it's got to be time to go. And I looked at my watch and it was like two. Because you know me, I'm a, I'm ready to go to sleep. I, I don't like yo. Out. We got to yeah. go, B. We got to go. I don't go out on my birthdays for me. I go out on my birthday for the for the surrounding people. Yeah. You know, um, I, I much I much rather celebrate my birthday during the day and then make sure I, I'm in sleep by, by a good, uh, respectable hour. <laughs> it's true, man. It's true. We just got to finish here. Uh, Kevin oh, Lee. Nah, I just saw it. Oh. Kevin Lee with the with the knockout first round KO. Yo, my man is sleeping. It's a bad man right there. Oh my god, yo, you, I must have mine on tape delay because you called it right before mine played. So you need to shut your ass up. 
Because I was like, what is you talking? Oh, that's what you're talking about. There yeah, it me. is. Ooh, Ouch. That hurt. Beautiful kick to the face. Damn. Yeah, man, anytime someone's foot touches your face, that's not a good thing. That sucks. Ouch. <laughs> he, he looks like Robert De Niro in Raging Bull right there. Yo. Like his face, yeah. facial features and everything. That's, that's a bad knockout, man. Damn. You know what? I give, I give thanks to this man, though, because he made sure to knock him out right by the cage so that his head didn't fall too hard to the... Oh! Yeah. I just saw it again. And then it, his his head didn't have to fall too hard to the ground. If you, if you <laughs> I, put his... Like, I'm going to lay you out, but I'm going to lay you out right here so that your head ricochets a little <laughs> off this cage to break the fall. That, that might have saved him from serious, you know, brain injury, so... Yeah, man. That's crazy. That's so Dang, crazy. That Damn. Oh. All, right. All right. So, MLB, oh. we had we had the um, Washington Nationals World Series champions. They came out. They won the first two. They lost the next three, and then came back and won the final two games in Houston against Verlander and Cole. We have new World Series champions, the Washington Nationals. What did you think of that series? First of all, that series was that series was pretty crazy, right? Because you think it about was. it from um, from the Washington's perspective, as far as how the series began, they they went out, took the first two in Houston. So if you're yep. on the Nationals team, if you're a Nationals fan, you're like, baby, this is a wrap. We're good. Mm -hmm. We about to tie this up, little bow at home, call it a day. And then, sure enough. Houston shows you why they've been uh, champions before this and why they still are going to be problems. Uh, we'll Forever see what happens right. with their yeah. pitching. Yeah, we'll see what happens with their pitching rotation. But regardless, man, they got a lot of good young players, uh, and they showed up to play. I I remember as soon as Houston got their, their lead, and it was Correa, he hit like a – he hit it right down the third base line and ricocheted off the wall and two more mm -hmm. scored. Right. In my head, that was game set match. I did not see a way in which Washington was able to wake up and, and really just put it on them and and be able to come back. I really didn't see that. You got to be happy for a team like Washington, especially after they go and they lose Bryce Harper and a whole bunch of people are like, oh, you lost Bryce, Hype. Bryce, Bryce Harper. That's it. Like, and you guys are going to. They were eight games under 500 at yeah. the halfway point. Like these guys I... were dead in the water. I think it was, don't quote me, but I remember it was at like 12%. I want yeah. to say it was around 12% chance of them making the playoffs. Yeah, man. Never mind. And, and this, for me, right, this is this is a team that's run, every team uses analytics, but this is one of the few managers left in baseball that kind of does the gut, the yeah. gut feeling. Mm -hmm. And I think it's, it's good for baseball because you get a little bit of pushback on all these analytic, analytical-driven teams um, cause like we've said before, I feel like you do need to have some type of balance. You can't run a sport in which there's a human element straight off of analytics. These aren't robots. Yeah. These, you are, these are human beings. And, and, and analytics in anything is for a long-term view, right? right? So those, those will work for the majority of your season. But you, to me, there is a such thing as a clutch factor. There is a such thing as a player being in the zone. And those things you cannot quantify by any type of number. They just don't exist. Yeah. You're that's 100%, what, that's what right? to me, you know, for me, that's what makes sports, that's what makes us love sports. If everything was analytic driven, then there would be no need to turn on the TV. Yeah. You would get, you know, this team would win it every time and that's it. Every time. Go look at football and tell me that analytics is the only thing that, if, that can affect sports when day in and day out or week in and week out I should say you sit there and watch a game on Sunday and you go how the hell did this team win yeah you know it's so true man that's why we do our picks I don't know why I don't know why in my head this game popped out but I remember last year opening day you know Saints Bucks in in New Orleans and the Bucks go in and lay a beat down on New Orleans yeah if I could have bet every penny in my pocket from now into the future on that game i would have i would have lost yeah. <laughs> i would have been living you, you'd been have been a broke man bridge somewhere but i just think i just think for washington you got to be happy for them um shout out bryce harper for uh i don't know if you remember this but when he first got introduced he slipped up and said 
you know, they got to bring a wash, uh, championship to Washington. Um, and <laughs> he did. He must have put. He must have dropped that good juju on him. Yeah. Him and Juan Soto, they got it done. Yeah, man. Juan Soto, that kid's gonna be a problem for a long time. Yo, he's a baby kid. Twenty-one years old, man. Baby, Dude's gonna bro. be and a problem. He rakes. Yep. Yeah, he's a good player, man. Yeah, it's crazy, man. And then also Dave Martinez, back to back, second um, Puerto Rican manager to win the World Series. We had uh, Correa or. Er, Cora last year was. I was about to say, damn, he's a player and a, <laughs> and a GM coach. We, we had Cora win it last year with the Red Sox, and this year we have uh, Martinez with the Nationals. So, hat tip to them. Well played, gentlemen. And uh, I love seeing it. Also, in other news, the Mets have a new manager. They do. They decided on Carlos Beltran. We also have. <laughs> Uh, Joe Girardi accepted the job in um, Philly. It's not breaking news. It happened during our little off period that we had, but we wanted to bring that Again, to you guys too. I apologize. That was that was. I know sometimes <laughs> I'll be blaming it on you. This was on me, but was on had me. a lot of test exams, you know, juggled in there. It's all good, um, man. You, you're doing the uh, you're doing the school thing. You know, big yeah. big props to you moving forward. So. It sounded good until the work started rolling in, yeah. and I was like, "What the hell did I do this for?" Like, nah, but I will, this. yo. But I will say this: I was listening to the Michael K. Show, and a lot of uh, Mets fans were calling in, and it's interesting to me because you take a you take a fan base that has been depressed for a while now. I mean, I know they made it to the to a World Series a couple years ago, but overall, they've had a lot of seasons where they just feel like they haven't been successful. Right. So. I always like listening to them because, man, you could tell, and this is going to sound messed up, but you could tell when a fan comes or a fan supports a losing organization because they just take a pessimistic view to everything. Everything. Everything and anything they like, can. Let me explain something, right? You do not know how this is going to turn out. You just don't. Like, you have no idea if Beltran is going to turn into a Hall of Fame manager or a manager that sucks. But yeah. what I will say is if you're going to go with somebody with no experience as a manager, it's really hard to do any better than him. Yeah. Like I even had – they I like I was on the show, my bad. They even had a caller that, that called in and said, what do you say? Oh, I don't like him because he's not he's not clutch. First of all, that, that has wrong. nothing to do with anything now. It has nothing to do. Has nothing, has nothing to do with it. So for me, it's the Mets did exactly what they wanted to do in that they found, you know, similar to what the Yankees did with Boone, someone who doesn't have any managerial experience. And a lot of the Yankees fans were able to be a little bit more optimistic because of, like, the structure of, and the foundation of the team right. that set there. I feel like the Mets could have, man, the Mets could have picked anybody and those fans would have called up and complained. Yeah, man. It's it's sad, but it's true. It's like suffering from PSD from your, like, team. Yeah, for real. 100%. So, also, today, rivalry weekend for us. Our boys at the U. We went up to Tallahassee and... Them good old Florida boys. I, I believe they call it an ass whooping, is what we handed them. Yeah, it got pretty out of hand once the uh, it was. Dude, the game was super chippy too, man. Yeah. Yeah, there was a couple plays in there where I was like, "Yep, yeah, that them's his fighting words." Mm -hmm. You're not about to pull on my face mask and not get something back. But that's that's a Florida State Miami game, man. Every year you get something like that, some crazy. So what I love. What I love about this game, I know you say it's a rivalry game, and you're right, too, but I, I feel like it has such a big impact on recruiting. Oh, like both, big time. Yep. Both teams come in 4-4. Four and four. You, I know, you know, they really recruit the same landscape. So, you know, if you build a fence around Florida like the U was able to do in the 90s, you're going to put together a good team. Yep. So I guarantee you there will be one or two players that see that game and go, oh, no, nah, I'm, going, I'm going with them boys. Yeah. I'm, I'm going with them boys over there. So we gotta it's big love time, it. Man. I know, 
I know the season hasn't really unfolded like we wanted it to, five and four, but you got to take what you can get, right? Yeah. And if you're looking at it, you know, new head coach versus new head coach, where do you see the upswing going? And maybe because I'm a little biased, but it's leaning towards the U. It's not leaning towards Florida State. Yeah, we'll see, man. It'll be it'll be interesting uh, to see next year's recruiting class and how that all shakes out. Cause you know Manny Diaz was doing a lot of eccentric things this year. You know, yes, having, was. Ha- yeah, having concerts in the locker room and stuff. So we'll see. You got to Anytime you have that type of bravado, you got to back it up with winning, or you're just gonna look like a joke. People are gonna yeah. be like, "Bro, why are you dancing? You had a sub 500 record." Yeah. I know right now we're above it, but I'm saying got to kind of use these as building blocks so that next year you don't look like you're packing it in with just a lot of fluff. Definitely. And these kids with that transfer portal, that transfer portal, man, if you lose them, bro, they out. <laughs> they or, or they'll do what they did um, to Houston, the Cougars. I think two, maybe even more, but two of their star players, once they saw how the season was unfolding, actually decided to take this year off as a redshirt year because they realized that they weren't going to be like nationally in the playoffs or anything yeah. like that. So you got a lot of these kids that are looking to kind of um, take control of their career, and rightfully so. And so, um, speaking of these kids taking control of their career from the college level, during the week we got official word that the NCAA is going to allow athletes to profit off their likeness. Image, Cali, right? Name, no, all over the NCAA. All over? Yep. Yeah. I believe well, they they're, have, they're looking listen, to start that in 2020. Once Cali did it, because I think Cali was the first yeah. uh, state that did it, but but once California did that, the NCAA had no choice because you're talking about what a recruiting tool that would be, you know what I'm saying? For real, you, man. You got, you got a school like USC that rolls in and says, oh, no, nah, we're going to offer you what they offer you, plus you can make some money with us. And... If you're an avid gamer like myself, and I know sometimes you like to dabble, mm-hmm. uh, that means NCAA football should be coming back. Cannot wait. So I got, we'll wait to I see. I do got to step my game up. Oof. Let's not talk about it. <laughs> my 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 young bear, he took me out. Nah, young, young bear is full grown now. <laughs> he took me out. He took you out. Yours no, was no, a no, lot closer than mine. But... A, mine was a lot closer. B, he gave me a faulty controller. Try to tell me that the analog stick worked. You just had to press it hard. That wasn't the case. My my analog stick was dead fish, bro. Just like knocking against the controller. But it's okay. I got his gamer tag. Once my schedule frees up, we are going to run that back, and I'm going to put him in his rightful place. Look forward to look unit. forward to being uh, cage side for that. See that. Don't worry, you will be. But then also now, NBA is back, full swing. So notable injuries within the last week. Steph Curry out, extended period of time, broken broken hand. Draymond out also for an extended period of time, torn ligament in a finger. It's getting it's getting hard for Golden State. There's there's not a big number one pick coming out of college right now to be like, oh man, they're gonna be get a big influx if they kind of tank this out. But it's gonna be tough. I'm never for for a team that was able to develop players such as Curry, Clay, and Draymond. I'm never gonna put them out. You know what I'm saying? There might mm-hmm. not be a Zion at this moment, but we'll see. Um, we'll see how a couple of the players that are transitioning into college uh work their way through it's just it's a dose of reality i mean i don't think i think next year when everyone comes back healthy you're starting to see a there's going to be an adjustment period because whenever you don't have durant on your team you know players are going to have to find their roles again Mm -hmm. um and now you're seeing how important clay thompson is to that team yeah right because before I know they had a deeper vent bench, but before Durant got there, it was Draymond, Clay, Steph, and they were able to obviously win the most games ever in a regular season yeah. to getting smacked by 40 by the Suns at halftime. So you definitely see in the importance of Clay Thompson. Um, Curry looked like he was going to go out there and put put up big numbers. 
So it'll be interesting to see what happens. I'm more interested to see what they do with D'Angelo Russell. Does this mean they move him sooner than expected? I know they might have held on to him. Try to get some capital or some players for him. It's yeah, true. so it'll be interesting to see how long of a stay D'Angelo Russell has there. Um, shout out to my Heat and Kendrick Nunn out there balling. They're doing their thing, man. He scored the most points, uh, I think, for the first five games as a rookie. Yeah. I'll take so, that. I know they say a thing about the sophomore slump. You know, that second year in the league, everybody starts to kind of figure you out. But Luka Doncic Listen, is a bad I man. Did, That's a bad man. I don't know who I had this argument with. It might have been Levy. But I was telling him when he was coming into the league because we were arguing about who's going to win rookie of the year. Mm -hmm. And I was like, listen, it's going to be Luka Doncic. Not because I sat there and watched a whole bunch of Luka tapes. But you look at him, he's been playing professional basketball since a teenager. Yeah. And 14, second, 15. Exactly. And it's in the second best league in the world. No disrespect to the NCAA teams, but you could take the worst team in that league and they'll smack a blue blood division one team. Won't even be close. Yeah. I mean, that's just the difference between grown man strength and young, no young strength. men. Yeah. yeah. So he won MVP of that league. He won MVP of the finals. He won the championship that year. There was going to be no adjustment period for him, right? You saw it with Trey Young. Trey Young had to get used to scoring against um, NBA quickness, yep. against NBA size. Did he figure it out? Yes, because if you're a great player, that's what you do. Mm -hmm. You figure out, all right, cool, this work, this move still works in the NBA. This move, not so much. Luka never had that adjustment period because he knew what to do against grown-ass men already. Yeah. And now you give him a player like KP, someone that he can run the pick and roll with. And the, and the beautiful thing about his game is it's not really predicated on just flat-out speed. So you're never going to see him. There's certain players like a Russell Westbrook, like a De'Aaron Fox, who their, their, their game is so much predicated on their speed that either A, sometimes it can be a detriment to their team, or right. B, they they struggle against maybe guards who are just as fast as them because they're like, all right, what do I do? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But a player like Luka Doncic at his size, with his passing ability, I mean, it doesn't matter who's on him. He just moves at his own pace. You saw it last night against the uh, Lakers when he hit that step back over LeBron. I mean, the, the kid's a problem. And he got he got pops from, from Big Bron saying, keep it up, you know, you're a bad motherfucker. Yeah, I mean, and he is. He is. He's he's an amazing player. He's gonna keep Dallas relevant forever, as long as he's there. As he and, stays uh, there, yeah. If they can keep KP healthy, man, they, that's a that's a really good one-two punch. They got a couple of players um, coming off the bench, so Dallas will be an interesting team in the West. And I think I know, as of right now, you're looking at you know Paul George and Kawhi Leonard, LeBron, and AD as the top one-two punch in the West, but maybe not this year, but in a one or two years, Luka and KP are going to have something to say about that. Yeah, man. I look forward to seeing their development and seeing how they how they develop as teammates and what they can bring to the table in that Western Conference. Yo, these dudes are throwing right now. Yeah, these heavyweight bad boys, Lewis and Ivanov, are going... Ham All right, cool. Right yeah, I was thinking about saying the names, and then I saw the second one. I was like, nope. <laughs> I can say Lewis. That other one has got to me. Yeah. So let's jump into it, man. NFL. A little bit of foosball. Our our bread and butter, what we love. Before we get into our picks. That I am two back now. Two back. From <laughs> six. <laughs> that two, boy's coming. Two back. Just a side note for everybody, right after the Kansas City game last week, Joe picked uh, Green Bay, I picked Kansas City. The minute the clock hit 0-0, zero, zero, I got a text that said, I sure did. Shh, I'm coming. I sure did. <laughs> exactly at 0-0. Zero, zero. I said, this mother flower is starting already. I did it. I did it for the people. I couldn't run away with I think that's three years in a row. I would have just ran away and trampled over you. So I said, you know what? I'm going to get the ratings up. I'm going to let you get that seven game, six game lead, whatever it was. It's all semantics now. It don't even matter. And I was like, you know what? Midway of the season, time to time to brush up, throw on the cape, 
I'm gonna get my yeah. wins. Disrespectful. But we had trade deadline. Came and went. We were both stuck to our screens, our phones, updating. No, we, weren't. Our... we were at work, Fred. Shut up. We weren't stuck to our screens. <laughs> we were in hard We were updating employee. our threads. That's what it was. Okay. We were, we were staying up to date, and absolutely nothing happened at the deadline. Very yeah, lackluster. Thing, Everything happened before. Yes. It would have been great if the deals that they were talking about, Jamal Adams, uh, Le'Veon Bell. No, I wouldn't have. I didn't want to see Jamal Adams in Dallas. You know that. I, w- I wanted to see moves happen. I was listening and I was trying to find right. out what was going on and nothing. But I do feel like it takes two to tango, right? A lot of these players that uh, were getting shopped around are on the trade market. It seems like the teams that had them were overvaluing them as far as wanting. I mean, Jamal Adams is a stud, and supposedly, from what I heard, they um they were really arguing over the secondary pick. It was like, yeah, we want a first and a third, and Dallas was like, no, only a first and a fourth. Thank God. Um, if I'm – honestly, if I'm Dallas, and they say they want a first and a third, and we're arguing a third and a fourth, I say I'm sending, I'm sending that third-round pick in a heartbeat. Jamal Adams is – a singular talent. The dude's a monster. And, I mean, you don't have a safety like that. It's what you need. Nah, I'm cool, man. He can stay his ass over in New York. <laughs> we don't need him over here. Stay in the AFC. And then other news. Um, we had Josh Gordon get cut off IR. Once he was like 28 teams passed on him. 28 teams passed on him. The one team that did take a runner on him and claimed him, it's kind of yeah. a big deal. You yeah. got Russell Wilson and them boys up in Seattle. You yeah, just gave him yeah, another yeah. target. We played him in a couple weeks, so I am a little nervous <laughs> that they picked him up. <laughs> but I, I think, I mean... If you want to talk about just getting off the team bus, can you think of a more imposing wide receiver duo than DK Metcalf and Josh Gordon walking to you? Insane. What, six, now, seven, both of them? One of yeah, them can take the top off, and well, both of them can really take the top off on you. And... Yeah, DK's, DK's a stud as far as uh, straight line speed. And then you got Tyler Lockett over there running around and with the ability of Russell Wilson to extend plays. It'll be interesting. I just hope, man, above it, above. Everything else, I know that Josh Gordon has went through a lot mentally. Mm-hmm. Um, so I hope him leaving New England, he's still able to stay on track. Cause, yeah, I hope so. You know, he, he's an amazing talent, but let's face it, the reason why a talent like him was passed over by so many teams is because a lot of teams don't want to, A, take on that baggage, and B, they don't even know if they're going to be able to, to give him the proper support that he needs. Right. Um, and normally, New England is the last stop for a lot of people's careers. Yeah. You know, once they go to New Antonio England, it kind of kind of ride off into the sunset. So for him, man, I hope he, uh, I hope he just stays on par and, and, and level-headed, man. And except the Eagles game, I hope he has a wonderful <laughs> year or half a year. Speaking of your Eagles, your former running back JJI. Reports are that he is taking a workout in Detroit. We also, right before the deadline, we got Kenyon Drake got traded to Arizona. That was one of those pre-deadline deals. But it and worked he, too, bro. He showed up and showed out with like three days on that team. I think he's going to be a problem over there in uh, in Arizona. Yes and no. Um, I think he could if he was the lead back, but I feel like once David Johnson That's is healthy true. and you see them sprinkle in Chase Edmonds, I do – when you see, at least in my opinion, when you see players like like David Johnson had a little bit of a resurgence as far as getting back to the player we knew he could be, he's mm-hmm. injured. Chase Edmonds goes in for three touchdowns against the Giants. He's injured. Kenny Andre gets over 100 yards from scrimmage. My point being is you got to give um, big ups to the first-time head coach – in yeah. the NFL for being able to develop game plans suited to those type of players. I mean, Kenyon Drake was there, what, a couple of days? Probably still hasn't even yeah. unpacked his bags. And they, they unleashed him, and he was able he to put these – Yeah, he's been able to put these players in 
in the right situations to succeed. So we shall see how that unfolds. I mean, for a six round pick, I think it was a six round pick, right? Um, yeah. You can't you can't really knock that that type of deal. Um, so yeah, man. Yep. So let's jump into these picks, man. I'm up to we both picked San Francisco on Thursday night, and we both lost because San Francisco only won by three, and the spread was ten. So moving on. Tomorrow morning's game, 9.30 a.m. East Coast time. Houston versus Jacksonville from London. Who you got? Jacksonville, or sorry, Houston is a minus one point favorite. Houston is a minus one point favorite. I don't know why. I don't know if it's because the past few years on paper, I've just really liked Jacksonville's team. But Mm -hmm. I got like a soft spot for them. I don't know why. Um, but, but at the end of the day, I know Gardner Minshew is having a great year. I just feel like, can you really go against Deshaun Watson? I mean, can you match blow for blow. That's a big one. Yeah. I feel, I feel like Deshaun Watson and that offense is going to keep on humming. Have you seen his eye though? That's pretty scary. His eye is pretty, pretty bad. bad. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but I am going to go with Houston on this one cause it's basically a pick em game with the one point. So I'm gonna roll with Houston. I'm going to go with you there to pick him, basically, to toss up. Um, but like you were saying, can he go toe for toe? And can they match the points? That's going to be a tough tale. So I'm going Houston. Next up, we've got Washington at Buffalo. Buffalo is a minus nine and a half. They let me down last week, my Bills. but Yo, they got a crack last week is what you meant to say. I'm, I'm going to stay with them, and I'm going to roll with them against Washington. I'm taking Buffalo here. Wow, you know, you really stepped up, stepped out on a limb on that one. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm going a, I'm to a, I'm a go with Buffalo. Uh, if Case Keenum was starting the game, I might take those points. But uh, you got a first, uh, first time starting QB and Dwayne Haskins against a Buffalo Bills defense that is still no joke. Uh, nine and a half is a bit much, but I think Buffalo is going to be able to turn some of those turnovers because you've seen it already that Haskins has the propensity to hold on to the ball a little bit too long. So I think Buffalo scores a couple times on defense and they are able to cover, cover that nine and a half. All right. And next up, we've got Minnesota at Kansas City. Kansas City has dropped their last three games at home. Again, we have no Pat Mahomes. The line is minus three and a half for Kansas City or for Minnesota. And I know they burned me last week, man, but I'm going Kansas City here. You're going Kansas City here. Is it because it's at home? It, it's at home. They they gave Aaron Rodgers hell last week and he just pulled it out at the end with like a fucking toss up touchdown. Um, I don't see, uh, Kirk Cousins being able to do that. So with that being said, I'm going Kansas city. Going Kansas city. <sighs> and what's the line? Cause right now mine says TBD. It's minus, Minnesota, what? minus three and a half. I, I checked on ESPN. ESPN yes, has a line yes, as a minus three and a half. Kansas City really needs to win that game Mm. really bad. At the same time, that defense is still really bad. Really, really bad. Uh, I'm not sure. I don't know if Matt Moore is going to be able to to go out there and do some of the things he was able to do against that Green Bay defense. He looked really good, actually. Mm -hmm. Um, So I'm actually going to go Minnesota here, man. I know know, it's a 1 o'clock game, so I'm hoping that Kirk Cousins actually shows out last weekend. He, they were able to kind of just lean on that running game, and I think that's going to be a big difference in this game as far as them right. being able to lean on Delvin Cook, kind of keep um, Kansas City's explosive offense off the field, even though they are minus Patrick Mahomes. Um, yeah, so give me Minnesota in this one. All right. Next game up, we've got the Jets at Miami. And this one's coming in at a nail-biting, I think the shortest spread for Miami all year, minus three. For the Jets. Man, we're not going to spend too much time on this. No, I'm just going to go with the Jets. Yeah, same here. All right, cool. All right, we'll go to your boys. 
We've got Chicago at Philly, and Philly is a minus five favorite. Listen, we haven't played a home game in over a month. <clears throat> you know it's hard to play at the link. I think Mitchell Trubisky has digressed a lot this year. I know that <laughs> that's to say an understatement. That's an understatement. Yeah, I, I, and I I kind of feel like they can employ the same game plan they did last week against Buffalo as far as trying to let the quarterback beat you and stuff in the run game. Um, which is one of the few things that that defense is actually good at. So yeah. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take Philly with this with this minus five, see if I can ride that out. Yeah, I'm going with you there. Minus five is rich against that defense, but they can't score points. So, And like you, guys, in a... you guys are also getting DJX back this week. Not just DJX, man. Listen, if you look, we haven't brought in anybody up. We haven't brought anybody up in the practice squad, which probably means Timmy Jernigan gets back. Yeah. Um, Jalen Mills and Ronald Darby get another week of action. Avante Maddox is back. He's going to be sliding into that nickel. So I know we didn't make any moves via the trade deadline, but we are getting a lot of starters back and healthy. So hopefully that could pay some dividends. Yeah. So next up we have Indianapolis at Pittsburgh. Indy is a minus one favorite going into this game. Yeah, I know T.Y. Hilton is out. That's going to hurt Indianapolis, but I still believe in that defense. I still believe in Jacoby Brissett. I know that James Conner is probably going to be out for uh, for Pittsburgh. Okay. And let's face it, Pittsburgh was down by what? It could have been 14-3 to if Ryan Fitzpatrick and the Dolphins are able to not. Um, Screw it I shouldn't up. even say – yeah, I shouldn't even say him, man, because that defense, that stick – that defense they played to let Demetri Johnson catch it, you know, and go 45 yards was, was really bad. <laughs> yeah. So Miami, they should have pulled away in that game. <clears throat> yeah, so I'm going to go with Indianapolis here. I feel like they go into Pittsburgh and get that win. Yeah, I, I agree with you wholeheartedly. You need to stop doing that because you <laughs> got two games to make up here. Keep going. But, yeah, I agree with you. Uh, next one up, we got Tennessee at Carolina. Carolina is a minus four favorite. They screwed me last week because I thought Carolina was going to give – the 49ers fits and CMC was going to run crazy. He did. No, he did. But they just couldn't pass the ball at all. So with that being said, I'm staying with Carolina and I'm going Carolina in this one. Yeah, I'm going Carolina too. I still don't trust Ryan Tannehill. Um, And like you said, Christian McCaffrey, if it wasn't the fact that he plays running back would be leading in the MVP category for me. Um, he is actually leading. It's just, you know, quarterback's a sexy position. You're not going to give it to a running back in today's age with the passing league. So, yeah, I'm rolling with Carolina there, too. Yeah. So, next one up, we got – this is the first 4 o'clock game, 4.05. Detroit at Oakland. Oakland is a minus two favorite. I'm taking Detroit here. They've been playing super tough the past couple weeks. Galladay is – catching everything and anything that's coming to him, and he's going over 100 every week. Uh, At least the past three weeks he has, like, plus two touchdowns. The dude's a monster. I'm going to trade here. Yeah, I mean, I I have to give Oakland their props. I didn't think they would have this competitive of a season. Um, But I do feel like Detroit is, is a lot better than their record says. Right. They've had a lot of close games, a lot of close losses. Um, so, yeah, I'm actually going to go Detroit here, too. <clears throat> nice. All right, we got Tampa Bay at Seattle. Seattle is a minus six-and-a-half point favorite. Who do you got here? I'm going Seattle. Seattle at home. Tampa, I know Tampa has a high-scoring offense at times, but they've screwed me too many times this year. <laughs> and... Uh, I just feel like Seattle at home with the 12th man is going to get it done. I know that six and a half is kind of high, but Jameis Winston is probably good for another two or three turnovers. So. Yeah. yeah, that six and a half is rich, but I'm going Seattle as well. Um, Jameis Winston, he's still eating dubs in his hand. I can't, I can't roll with that. Nah, thanks for Florida State, bro. We don't do that around. Yeah, not this weekend. Uh, next up, Cleveland at Denver. Denver is minus Joe Flacco, who will be out for the rest of the season. Uh, Cleveland is a minus three favorite. Listen, Cleveland, if you guys are going to make this any type of decent year, this is a game you got to go in there and yeah. roll. 
Um, on paper, you got the superior talent. Uh, I don't know what last week was. I mean, if you look at just the offensive and defensive line, they killed the Patriots. Yeah. But I don't know what type of voodoo was done, but I've never seen Nick Chubb fumble the ball because the offensive lineman kicked it out of his hand. Um, so I think Cleveland goes in there and beats Denver. Like you said, they don't have Joe Flacco. They don't have Drew Locke in there. I don't even know the quarterback they have starting. It doesn't really matter who they have starting because they gave away Emmanuel Sanders, who was balling out for the Niners. Yeah. So I'm going to go with the Browns, man. Yeah. Everything you basically said, I'm going with you. Cleveland, minus three. I'm taking Cleveland. Next up, you've got Green Bay at L.A. Chargers. Minus three and a half for Green Bay. I feel like you can give uh, you can you can give Green Bay six seven points here in the spread, and they're gonna cover. I'm I'm taking Green Bay. Chargers are struggling big time. I just can't see them pulling this one out. Yeah, man, I'm taking Green Bay here as well. Um, Chargers missing too many people on defense. Still, their offensive line is in shambles. Can't get Melvin Gordon going and. Phillip Rivers, I don't know if it's him declining because of age, but he really hasn't had the same Phillip Rivers magic this year. It could just be a down year. So I'm not going to look too much into it, but I think Green Bay pulls that one out. All right, next one, we've got New England at Baltimore. New England is a minus three and a half favorite. I'm going to go first on this one. I think this is the week that the Patriots fall from being undefeated. I think this is okay. going to be the first under, what, 25-year-old quarterback that finally beats Bill Belichick on the road. Baltimore has has always played New England tough. They almost lost last week, and Baltimore is a much better team than um, Cleveland, in my opinion. So I'm taking Baltimore in the upset here. I was just making sure this thing was on. Um, you're wrong. Uh, as good as as good as good Lamar Jackson is at running the ball, I mean, this Patriots defense is, through half the season, is all-time great. Um, I know that Baltimore has a, a good running game, and to be honest with you, on paper, they probably do have the better team. But I'm just not going to go against New England and Bill Belichick. They normally don't lose games. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if Baltimore finds a way to pull this one out because, like you said, it was uh, it was pretty close last week as far as if the Patriots weren't able to, to cause those turnovers to the Browns, the outcome of the game might have been different. Right. But I'm just not ready to bet against Bill Belichick and Tom Brady, bro. I think they'll lose, but it ain't going to be this week. All right. Last and final game, Monday night. November 4th, Dallas at the Giants. Dallas is a minus seven favorite. They will not have their stud linebacker. Vander Esch, he will be out. But they are going in riding high. Giants are, they will get Shepard back this week from the concussion protocol. Um, so we will see who you got here. I'm going to take the Giants because of the points. I think the game's going to be a little closer than the seven. I think that the Giants, surprisingly, their defense has played better than some have, in, have expected them to play. I think Van Der Esch missing is, is, is going to hurt them. Uh, and Daniel Jones is continuing to show that he might be the answer for them at quarterback. Um, and I just feel like they'll do enough to, to make it a close game. I don't think that seven is going to happen. All right. I am going with Dallas here. I okay. think uh, they will cover. Giants have had a rough time against the run. And Dallas is playing strong. I'm taking Dallas and the points here to close out our week nine. So we've got... The Vikings game, the Patriots game, and the Cowboys game. That's different. Yep. We've got three games this week. Do we break even? Do I go up five again, or am I? I'm not going to lie. I'm a little, like, I did these on the fly, so I'm looking back, and I'm like a little am about some of these picks, but <laughs> that's okay, man. This, this, this is what I do. So I ain't worried about it. Also, www.thesportsfrenzypodcast.com for all our stuff. Also, tallysitesports.com for our picks every single week. We are uploading the link for the YouTube to... 
um, our, all of our picks there so you guys can go there and click over to the YouTube page and find all of our picks every week. We thank you guys for listening. We appreciate you guys. We're sorry for the two-week break, but we will be back next week, and we will catch you guys later. Peace. I'm in.